Welcome to the introduction to NEC program. What is NEC? It's a not for profit international regulatory authority focused on ensuring effective and efficient reduction of risk to the reliability and the security of our grid, mostly power grids. And it's North American Electric Reliability Corporation Critical Infrastructure protection. That is what NEXT stands for. And it's a set of standards aimed at regulating, enforcing, monitoring, and managing the security of the bulk electric system. So you will hear the word BES a lot, and it covers North America to cover our key critical infrastructure because of the exposure to potential cyber risk. The threat from state-sponsored actors, malicious actors right now, brings it to the forefront of what we do. It can impact our way of life in the North um, America. So in the West, so it's a big deal for us. We, we take it serious and it provides and manages the standard compliance, risk assessment, and all underlying secure and confidential process involved with the computing systems relevant to NEC in general. So one thing you should prepare to um, be very conscious of is the word B, um, bulk electric system, BS. So it's just, a term used within the um, energy industry in general. So you hear a lot of um, BS, bulk electric system. So let's go on. What companies are required to have next SIP compliance? All bulk electric companies, commonly referred to as BPS, bulk power system, that provide electric power to huge population need to adhere with next SIP compliance. They are also required to conduct an annual audit for the same purpose, also very important. Um, the basic of next step, the plan involves nine standards to follow, along with additional 45 requirements that covers a wide range of areas. Things like sabotaging reports, asset identification, managing and controlling security, the electronic security perimeter, management of system security, and much more, which we'll discuss some of them shortly. Um, like we stated before, um, NEC is really focused within North America, United States, Canada, and Mexico, okay? Requirements under NEC, just to take a few and kind of quickly walk through them. Um, the next SIP standard requires utility company in North America to establish and adhere to a baseline set of cybersecurity measures. They must also define policies for monitoring and changing the configuration of their critical assets. They uh, have to also be required to implement IT controls to protect access to those critical cyber assets. Also, entities must identify critical assets and regularly perform a risk analysis of those identified critical assets. They have to require the use of firewalls to block vulnerable plots, plots and require the use of cybersecurity monitoring tools. So there should be a monitoring tool, a SIM tool, or probably sometimes they use like a SOC team to monitor for them. Whatever your strategy is, there should be monitoring in place in total. Also, organization must deploy system to monitor security events. So if there's any breach or any um, malicious attack, there should be a continuous monitoring process within the organization itself. So why is it important? Importance of NEXIP to ensure delivery of consistency and effective power to all res um, recipients of those power. Track, assess, and enforce a uniformity within compliance within the organization and a continuous regular audit also of the business. Some common related NEC access control compliance, you know, the key objective is always reliability, assurance, a risk-based approach, and a continued learning and continuous improvement of the process in general. Fundamental requirement of NEXIP in general, um, we must follow to identify critical assets, um, create control mechanism, enforce logical and physical security of the system, and recover any affected system following an incident. So it's gonna cover most of those fundamental 
cybersecurity framework guideline also. Um, a few of things will be similar along that line. So let's take one at a time. So one of the key standards we have like SIP002, this covers asset identification and classification. It's important to know what are the assets we have within this critical infrastructure at any point in time. What are the inventory of those assets? Are they assigned to owners? Who is approving those assets? SIP003 covers policy and governance. It means what is the policy creation process and maintenance of those policy creation? Is there designation of senior officials responsible to provide oversight in general? And what is the overall impact to the business? Do we know it? SIP004 gets into personnel training in general, security awareness, background check, training, access management, and access review. Those are big ones. SIP005 gets into network security. And this is talking about the electronic security perimeter or virtual um, security, if it's in the cloud or any other instances. What is the security around it? What about remote access? Is there secure remote access for vendors um, logging into our systems out of office? Or what is the process around that? That's a big deal now, especially with the advent of a lot of employee working remote now. It's even much more important to have a secure remote access also. Physical security, SIP006 gets into what is the physical security plan? What is the uh, monitoring of physical security perimeter within the organization also? SIP007 gets into system security control. This include patch management. How often do we have the patches for the systems done? What's the process around it? How do we manage ports and services? What is the malware prevention strategy? Security event logging, management of shared account, Password and credential management, every one of these key elements should also be covered. SIP008 gets into incident response. Do we have an incident response plan? SIP009 gets into recovery plan. What's the business continuity process for continuation of operation? What's the backup and restoration with you and the vendor? Then SIP0010 gets into change and vulnerability management. In general, what is the process around chain management, around vulnerability management, and remediation of those vulnerabilities, configuration, capture, and management within the business itself. So those are some of the key elements that we need to ensure is um, enforced in terms of those controls. SIP011 gets into protection of BES system information. This gets into how is the classification process and protection of information done. What is the disposal strategy for media that is used within the environment also? SIP 12 gets into control center communication. SIP 13, supply chain security, gets into what is the insurance to make sure that when we have um, supply chain issue in terms of getting equipment, getting new systems, what is the potential security risk there? Then SIP 014, physical security of key substation within the facility also is a big deal. So this gets into the breaking down, um, breaking it down into some much more deeper details. Um, BS cybersecurity system categorization gets into how do we specifically use this standard in terms of categorizing electronic access control or monitoring system, physical access control system packs, and how do we ensure protected cybersecurity is done within this standard. Security Management Console, this is getting into those specific solution used to ensure effective management of security. And many times accountability is achieved by delegating authority, and identifying senior management to develop policies around what is a sustainable security management control in general. SIP 0046 gets into personnel and training. We'd all agree that training is so vital and important in the overall process to be successful. We need to make sure that there's effective awareness and training. Each individual must undergo training every 15 months typically especially if they are involved in handling high 
impact via cyber security system. The risk and access control management, this includes the personnel risk assessment, access management, and the vocation or removal of personnel access privilege. So privilege access monitoring is a big deal um, in terms of training and awareness in general. Then we have 0056, electronic security perimeter. We get into some element of security awareness also. Risk and access control management also is a big deal in general. And of course, we want to make sure physical access is properly protected here. So here we get into <clears throat> physical security of BES cyber system. Do we have a physical security plan aims to restrict physical access through documented operational and procedural controls? Do we have a visitor control program to ensure there's um, an escort visitor log? Do we have a maintenance and testing program to continuously do like a test once every two years within the organization also? System security management, we want to make sure the ports and services are not exposed. Security patches are well defined. Malicious code prevention, we have like a malware process or playbook. We have security event monitoring tools. We have system access control properly done. So those are some of the things we get into with next SIP. Incident response and reporting in general, we want to make sure there's an incident response plan. The plan is continuously tested every 15 months. The response plan is reviewed, updated, and communicated to the larger team um, within 90 days of a security incident at all times. Recovery plan for BES cybersecurity, very important. We have to have recovery specification well-defined, recovery implementation testing constantly done. Then, of course, constantly reviewing the recovery plan, updating it, and maybe having the appropriate communication also. The configuration chain management and vulnerability assessment, you know, get into specific of the configuration chain management. In other words, things like the operating system, the software, the port, how are they properly um, configured? Then the configuration monitoring, how do we monitor the baseline every 35 days for unauthorized changes? Those are some of the baseline best practices. The vulnerability assessment, we want to make sure that there's an assessment constantly done mostly every 15 months. Then NEC SIP 0112, information protection. We want to ensure that the standard provides the requirements to identify information that could impact the function of BES uh, if it is maliciously misused, compromised, or stolen. It also specifies the right protocol for information protection and BS cyber asset reviews and the disposal of those assets also. And finally, we get into C014 physical security to ensure that um, the physical security standard is identified and protected in the transmission station and substation and the associated primary control centers. If there is any potential damage risk, we can easily monitor it. If individuals and staff are separated, we have a process in place for separation of our employees to ensure that our assets are also protected. It also specifies protocols for information protection and BES cyber asset reuse and disposal. And thank you so much. See you in the next.